exciting and new. Come aboard. We're expecting you. Life's sweetest reward Let it flow It floats back to you I can't hear very well. There's some kind of gag. You want me to mind someone's bag? Oh, you really are stuck. Up. But I think I have just found something that is going to blast your sinuses wide open. Excuse me, miss. Welcome aboard. I'm Gopher Smith, assistant purser. And this is none other than Isaac Washington. Hi. And my name is Isaac Washington. <laughs> Now that we've got that clear, uh, Murdoch. Joyce Murdoch? Joyce Murdoch. Ah, uh, yes, here we are. Aloha Deck Cabin 125. Isn't it like Noah's Ark? All the animals boarding two by two? Mm-hmm. You know, two by two? Right. Toodaloo. <laughs> Toodle-loo. Isn't that what she said? You better run some pipe cleaners through there, man, or you are going to be toodle-looing all by yourself. Oh, hi. Welcome aboard. Oh, hi. I'm Vicki Steubing, and this is Dr. Adam Brooker. Hi, welcome. Hi, I'm Kim Miller. These uh, trips keep you busy, Doctor? Not very. Uh, judging by the health of our passengers, I'm beginning to suspect there might be vitamins in margaritas. <laughs> Oh, you made it, huh? I knew if anyone mentioned margaritas, he'd show up. This is my good friend and bad influence, Tom McDonald. Well, welcome. Hey, good to see you. And this is his daughter. Libby McDonald. Though I'm thinking of changing it for the stage. Should have changed it for your report card. <laughs> Libby plans to become an extremely famous actress. Oh, how neat. Are you in show business, Mr. McDonald? No, one ham in the family's enough. We're here with the Single Parents Club. Oh, well, we've made up some special brochures with all the things the kids can do. Come on, I'll show you. We have ping pong and shuffleboard and an electronic game. She glad I talked you into coming? Excuse me, is there a phone where I could call ashore? Could I help? My name is Ken Miller and I'm considered a terrific dialer. I think I can manage. <laughs> I'm sorry, you won't be able to call now. The phones don't operate until we're at sea. Oh, thank you. Ooh. Just solid ice. Oh, I'm sure they're not all like that. Uncle Ken, look at all the hot things they have for us to do. They haven't missed a thing. Mr. Miller, it seems as though the phones aren't working yet, but I do appreciate your offer. Be 
even the girls who were like that aren't like that. What does that <laughs> Maybe you could tell me one more thing. What changed her mind? Well, we certainly have an attractive group of passengers this trip, eh? We certainly do. How do you do? This is Julie McCoy, our cruise director, and I'm oh, Captain yes. Stuving. Welcome aboard. How do you do? I'm Alice Bailey. Oh, I hope you have a pleasant trip, Miss Bailey. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Captain, welcome aboard to you, too. <laughs> well, Miss Bailey, you're on the Aloha Deck, cabin 354. All those cabins have just been redecorated. With uh, blue and white curtains and matching bedspreads. Well, how did you know? Just pictured it. You did? Not only that, but... Uh, I expect to meet the man of my dreams. Really? Well, did you just have a feeling, like a premonition? Uh-huh. Well, that's amazing. Uh, look, if you don't mind, I'd like my cabin assignment. Name is Lassiter. Of course, Mr. Lassiter. Welcome aboard. Let's see, you're on the promenade deck, cabin 348. Happy sailing. <laughs> With my luck, it'll rain every day. <laughs> hey. Oh, I'm so dreadfully sorry. Hello. Welcome aboard. You should be more careful with those ridiculous netting needles. Well, I'll certainly try. Have a nice cruise. Oh, don't worry about him. With all these people on board, you'll probably never see him again. Oh, but I shall. Your head's still stuffed up? <laughs> Hi, Golf. Oh, I sure hope this sun helps. My head is still stuffed up. Figured. I figure. Hi, guys. Hi. How are you enjoying the cruise? Oh, it sure is a great ship. And mm -hmm. I've got the best room. Right around the corner to the left. What's right around the corner? The restroom. <laughs> Funny guy. <laughs> I think you're both strange. She did not say, where's the restroom? Six years on this ship, you don't know where that is? <laughs> no, sir, no. No, Isaac here is having trouble hearing. I was helping him out. His head's all stuffed up. Oh, well, maybe you should see Doc, Isaac. I don't need a doctor. It's an order. He said it's an order. You imagine asking me if I'd like some company? Hi. Mind if I collapse here? Oh, no, be my guest. <laughs> First time jogging? No. Last time jogging. <laughs> I'm... What's left of me is Ken Miller, if you remember. Oh, yes, I do. I'm Sarah Curtis. May I ask with my last breath, are you alone? Unfortunately, yes. I wanted to be here with Todd, but... Todd? Is he the man in your life? Oh, very much. And that's who you wanted to phone? Uh-huh. Then I'll go ahead with my collapse. Todd is my son. I'm also a member of the Single Parents Club. Single parents? I may decide to survive. I wanted to bring him, but my mother insisted that I get away by myself for a change. I'm certainly glad she did. Oh, well, if you'll excuse me, I'll see if I can't get my call through to him now. Do you think we could have dinner tonight? Oh, sounds like fun. I look forward to meeting your daughter. Who? Your daughter. I saw both of you in the lobby. Oh, you mean Libby. <laughs> I'm sorry for being so unfriendly when we first met, but I thought you were just another single man on the make. I look forward to seeing you both tonight. A 
are those the uh, entry blanks for today's mileage plate? They sure are. All you have to do is guess how many miles you think the ship will travel by 6 o'clock tonight. Thank Good you. Luck. Thank you. Oh. oh, it's you. Yes. Uh, how is your arm? Oh, it's fine. I I'm sorry I was so rude before. Oh, I've forgotten. See, I've been all wound up. That's why my doctor advised me to take this cruise. Entering the mileage pool? Mm-hmm. Uh, are you in it? Oh, my, no. I never bet on anything. That's smart. Losing is no fun. Oh, I'm not afraid of losing. I'm afraid of winning. You're afraid of winning? You see, I'm a very good guesser, so it wouldn't be any fun in it. A good guesser? Yes. You know, you're sometimes in a strange place, and quite suddenly it seems familiar, and you're sure that you've been there before. Or just like I, I knew that my cabin would have blue and white curtains. It happens to me all the time. My sister used to call me the tomorrow lady. I'm Glenn Lassiter. Alice Bailey. One, two, three. I beg your pardon? 123 miles. That's what the ship's going to travel. Yeah. I'll do it. Julie. Yes? You're my witness. If I win the pool, you're going to buy Madame Lasanga here all the champagne on this tub. Oh, could he? I'll be right back as soon as I drop this off. Mr. Lasseter? Mm-hmm? Do you spell your first name with one N or two? One. G-L-E-N. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, well. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hey, I thought you'd be off making a date with that lady. Yeah, I was. We're having dinner. Hey, terrific. Is she as overjoyed about this as you are? <laughs> she agreed only because she thinks I'm a fellow single parent. Libby's single parent, in fact. Oh, that's what changed her mind about you. And when she finds out I'm not a fellow single parent... So don't tell her. You can borrow Libby. Libby, you want to be an actress, don't you? Sure, but... So help old Uncle Ken out. Pretend to be his daughter. It'll be like an acting class. Yeah. I can't pull a dumb stunt like that. It's only temporary until she gets to love you for your own sweet self. Then you can tell her and have a laugh. Oh, please, Uncle Ken. But I... I... Remember, all's fair in love and war. Ask any divorce lawyer. I don't think I could pull it off. I don't know anything about being a father. Don't worry. My dad didn't either until I trained him. Ow! My eyes aren't so good, and that's a bigger target. <laughs> that was just an antibiotic, Isaac. Isaac, you have a middle ear infection. Both ears. Can you understand what I'm saying? Most of it. But when I'm up on deck and the music's playing and everybody's talking, I can't understand anything. Well, I'll try to avoid those situations. And watch people's lips. We all read lips to a certain extent. It'll help until this clears up. Doc, this couldn't become permanent, could it? The odds are against it, Isaac. Don't worry. Okay. Thanks. about the time completely we better dress for dinner you will uh, join me won't well you? i'd love to and i know exactly what you order lamb chops now, how'd you know that oh 
I forgot. You're the tomorrow lady. <laughs> Not this time. I often eat at the Chez Paris restaurant. I've seen you there, oh, lots of times. You like that little table by the window in the corner. Mm -hmm. And you always order the lamb chops. It's funny. I don't remember ever seeing you there. Oh, I don't think you remember seeing anybody. Your head was always buried behind the financial pages. <laughs> Mr. Lassiter, I have some good news and some bad news for you. I'll bet I know the bad news. I lost in the mileage pool. No, you won the mileage pool, $410. The bad news is you owe Miss Bailey all the champagne on the ship. Hooray! <laughs> I can't believe it, I actually won. Oh, I'm so happy for you. I'll meet you here at 8 o'clock then, right? I'll walk you to your No, cabin. no, no, you stay here for your phone call. My phone call? Mr. Lassiter, telephone call. <laughs> <laughs> it's from your office, a Mr. Golden. Thank you. Hello, Bill. Deal fell through, huh? Just some more of our lousy luck. Well, I, uh... I, uh... Guess I better fly back from Acapulco. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't do anything. I'll call you back later. I might just be on to something that is going to make us winners for a change. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought Libby to dinner. I only wish my son was here. He sounds like a real cute guy. You must think I'm a terrible mother having left him at home. You two probably go everywhere together. All oh, the time. We don't. Oh, well, you see, staying at home is like a vacation. We've got a gigantic house with a pool and lots of tennis courts and lots of servants. It's really hot. Actually, it's not that hot. Our downstairs maids don't do ballroom floors. <laughs> How about the Acapulco Lounge for some dancing? And I know you'd love to go play some video games. Well, they're awful expensive. Thank you, Daddy. That should last at least half an hour. <laughs> well, I'll meet you in the lounge. I promised Todd that I'd call him before bedtime. Good night, Libby. How am I doing, Daddy? Okay. You're a last-minute daughter. She seems to like you. I'm not so sure. I still get the feeling I'm losing out to a seven-year-old kid a thousand miles away and his Dr. Dent. <laughs> Five bucks is plenty. Thank you. To uh, Madame Lasagna. <laughs> I've got a surprise for you. Close your eyes and hold out your hand. I hope it's not another jab of the knitting needle. I'm a bleeder. Look <laughs> close. Hey. Well, that's great. My name's on it, too. How'd you do that so quickly? Well, I had kind of a head start. Look, she's giving him the scarf with his name knitted on it. So. Well, his name was knitted on the scarf before she came on board, before she even met him. And he just won the mileage pool with the number she gave him. Are you saying she has a crystal ball? She's got something. Yes, a lot of luck. You uh, never played the stock market? Mm -mm. I have a few shares my late husband left me in thermal shale. But I don't pay much attention to it. I just sort of know what it's doing. Well, uh, what do you sort of know, uh... Thermal shale did the day. Oh, it went up three or four points. Oh, but that's all boring. Let's talk about you. Do you have a family? No, I uh, I live alone, and uh, that's uh, pretty boring too. It certainly is. I know. No, actually, uh, nothing very interesting has ever happened to me until now. Good combination, Ken. 
charming, handsome, and a very good dancer. Please go on. I'm also a very good listener. Do you know what I like about you the best? Is your wonderful relationship with your daughter. Oh. She's really something. I like her a lot. I like your son, too. How do you know he's not even here? That's what I like about him. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> You like Waterstone? I used to love it, but I haven't been in years. Well, they've got some nice soft water in Acapulco Harbor. How about, uh, how about tomorrow morning? Okay, you got a deal. I'll meet you in the morning at the gangway. Good night. You're leaving? Well, you better be with Libby. It can be upsetting being alone in a strange place without your father. She's got a picture of me. A big one. <laughs> oh, and I'll understand. But she's independent like I am. In fact, I haven't thought about my own father once all night. We have to make sacrifices for our children, but it's worth it, isn't it? No. Hi. Hi, Gove. Your ears still bothering you? Yeah. You seem to be hearing me okay. Well, it's not so bad when there isn't any other noise. And I can watch your lips. You know what I think we ought to do? I think we ought to find something to cheer you up. <laughs> And I think young Dr. Gopher has just discovered the wonder drug. No, it's not gonna work. Yes, it is going to work. It's very quiet here. You talk to me, you can talk to her. Now, while you are talking to her, if you happen to see her lips start to pucker, I don't think you need me to tell you about it. <laughs> Excuse me, good evening. Miss Murdoch, I wonder if you would come with me for a moment. There is a certain someone that is extremely interested in talking to you. How intriguing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who is it? No, 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 no. Now then, Miss Murdoch, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing to you Captain Miles Standish. <laughs> he is besmitten with terminal shyness. So that's it. I was beginning to think it was me. <laughs> ah. Um, have a seat. You've got a good friend in Gopher. I sure do. But there's always room for one more. Next round. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you really don't need Gopher. You seem to me like a fellow with a mind of his own. Uh, what was it? I just said that I thought. You seem to me like a guy with a mind of his own. Joyce, I, um, I just remembered I have to get back on duty. Oh. I guess Gopher was just trying to please a lonely passenger. But you don't have to do your duty with me. I'll see you around. won't have a sing-along, but they need a leader. And Julie thought, since you have such a good voice, that... Will you stop bugging me? Will everyone just stop bugging me? I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Thermal shale. What did it do today? 
three and a half points? <laughs> she hit it right on the nose. Look, Bill, now here's what I want you to do. Scrape together all the cash you can lay your hands on and be ready to buy. I'm about to take on a red-hot investment partner. Right. Bye. Excuse me. Uh, Alice, uh, can I talk to you out in the deck for a minute? Good. Glad you to see you. Bye. Well, Captain, Miss Bailey does have a crystal ball. She said she was going to find the man of her dreams, and there you are. Are you still a doubting Thomas? No. A doubting Merrill. <laughs> Alice, I uh, realize that uh, you haven't known me very long. Uh, with some people, it, it doesn't take very long. Yeah, I feel the same way. Now, look, if, if what I say sounds crazy to you, just say no. Well, what is it? Well, I think we'd be great together. Oh, Glenn. So do I. And I do... I do everything to make you happy. Well, I, I guess I didn't make myself clear. I, uh, I, I was suggesting a business partnership. Business? Oh. Well, you know, stocks, bonds, investments, with, with your instinct. Oh, yeah. How silly of me. Yeah. Uh. Uh, a business partnership. Oh, Alice, I'm sorry. I'm such a dummy. No, no, no. It's all right. It, it really is. Now, uh, it's a little late. Could we talk about it in the morning? Sure. Then I'll say good night. I'm going ashore alone with Sarah. But she'll smell a rat. She'll be expecting your daughter to come along. I'll just have to risk it. I just don't feel right about taking all your time away from your father. I think you two are entitled to have some fun together. You're sure it'll be okay. So this will be my final scene. <laughs> no. I cannot go ashore with you. A horrible disease is racking my frail body. <laughs> I'm Sarah. Hi, you two. Are you ready? Sure am. See you later, Libby. You're not going with us? Thank you, but I'd really prefer to remain here. <laughs> I don't understand. Have you two had a quarrel? No, of course not. Everything's fine. Well, I think she'd rather go. No, she's gone. See? Sleep well? Oh, well, I slept lousy. In fact, not at all. Look, about last night, I, I... That was my fault. Please, forgive it. But I can't forget. All night long, I kept wondering if maybe what I did want to suggest was something more than a business partnership. That's very sweet of you. But you must be honest with yourself. What you want is not me. It's my good luck. Maybe you're right. My problem is that, that I, I, I'm not sure. 
You see, I've, uh, I've been a huckster for so long that I, 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 I don't know what my real feelings are anymore, or even if I have any. I find you a very special lady, but I've had such bum luck lately that in business, in everything, that maybe I am just uh, grasping at you as a good luck charm. That's probably it. But I wouldn't want to disappoint you. You know, I've never really tried to know what's ahead. Either it, it, it just happens, or it doesn't. Mm. Is it, uh, is it happening for thermal shale? I'd really rather not say. Supposing I'm wrong. Well, you've been great so far. Will it, uh, go up or down? Uh, it's going to go up. A lot? A, a, a big jump? I think so. Okay. I'm going to cable my office and place an order. Now, you get rid of your knitting, and we're going into Acapulco and shake up the town. <laughs> okay, partner? Okay, partner. Sarah, you were poetry and emotional in those water skis. Well, when I hit that wave, I thought I was going to be poetry and traction. I just wish Libby could have been along with us. Um, there's something you should know about Libby and me. Oh, you did have a quarrel. No, it isn't that. Well, whatever it is, I'm sure having an understanding father like you will help her get through it. You want to talk about it? Maybe later. <laughs> okay. I'll see you this evening. Right. Bye. Bye. I think we bought enough stuff? Nope. <laughs> uh, we did have a wonderful time this afternoon, didn't we? Huh? Then there's no reason why we shouldn't continue it, is there? So let's have a drink. <laughs> Libby. Well, I thought you wanted to stay on board. Well, uh... Uh, this is Tom McDonald. He's, he's a very good friend of mine, and I... I guess they decided to pop ashore for a few minutes. I see. I think we'd better cancel our plans for tonight. Well, Sarah, let me explain. There's nothing to explain. Obviously, you didn't want her along with us. But Tom's a very close friend. But he's not her father. That's very selfish. And now I feel like an interloper between you and your daughter. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. <laughs> Oh, well, it looks like you two cornered the pinata market. We won all of them at a little street carnival. They had this booth, and this guy is moving these walnut shells around. You bet on which one has got the pea under it? The old shell game. Yeah, but nobody ever wins at that. Madam Osaga did. Five times in a row. <laughs> Say, maybe we'd better ask if a message came about the stop. How can we miss? You just cleaned out Mexico. Next stop, the world. <laughs> We'll be cruising home past Cabo San Lucas along the shores of the beautiful Baja Peninsula. Isaac, we're sorry. We know you're going through a really rough time now. I always imagined that being deaf would be kind of peaceful. But it isn't at all. Life is still full of noise. I can't make out what a person is saying across the table, but I can hear dishes clanging. It's like everybody is speaking a foreign language. Oh, Isaac, take it easy, please. I don't feel I can function in my job. Socially, I'm a total wipeout. When you're deaf, you can never, ever hear a soft, romantic whisper again. No, it's not peaceful. Not a bit.
Could we speak to you a minute? Well, there's really no point in it. Please. My father has something very important to tell you. Then why isn't he here? He is. I don't understand. This is my father. And I got the bank statements to prove it. You're the father? Then why did... Well, you see, Ken was very attracted to you, but felt that you were interested only in meeting another parent. So I suggested that he borrow Libby, just till the ice was broken. Then you were just pretending. Well, it was just for fun. Uncle Ken's a neat guy to be around. Yeah, but don't give him credit for the idea. That dummy was against it. He wanted to play straight with you. It was my brainstorm convinced him that all's fair in love and war. Love? Yeah, he was really hit hard. But I don't blame you for dumping him. He's not very smart. Insisting that Libby spend all day ashore with her father when he could have used her to make points with you. But he wouldn't go for it. I think the guy might be interested in some kind of fatherhood for himself. You do? Which proves he's obviously unbalanced. <laughs> the dangerous type. <laughs> You're better off without it. I wonder why you haven't heard from your office about the stock you bought. Nothing to worry about. Anyone who can win at the old shell game can beat a little outfit like the New York Stock Exchange. <laughs> Mr. Lassiter, this just came for you. Ah, the good news. Now we can buy our own cruise ship. What happened? It went down. Oh, Glenn. Way down. Oh, I tried to tell you. I'm not always right. Well, you picked a fine time to be wrong. Can't be true. I, I'm going to phone through and verify it. Miss Bailey, is everything all right? I guess it had to happen. When it's for piñatas, it's no problem. But when it's for something I really wanted, I wanted it so much for him. I... I just tried too hard. Well... It's over. No more tomorrow, lady. No more tomorrow. Hi. Oh, hi. I had a talk with Libby and her father. I'm sorry about that. Why? He made it very clear it was all his idea. He's a clever man. Not too clever. He was really matchmaking. But I guess you can see now that I'm a lousy prospect. Finally realized it myself. I'd be a terrible father. Really terrible, huh? I'm too selfish. I truly did not want my daughter along today. Just us. No, I can never be the kind of parent you are. Good. I hope you never are. But, but you're devoted, protective. Make that overprotective. A typical single parent mistake, trying to be both mother and father. I submerged my own life, gave up all my interests, riding, dancing. Isn't that what makes a good parent? wrong the best thing that i could offer my son is not suffocating over attention but a happy and fulfilled mother you may have a point you were the one who made me realize that from now on i'm going to catch up on all the things i like to do he and i will both be better for it if that means you'll have some free time could you pencil me in Oh, I suppose that might be possible. But I'll ink it in to make sure. Said you want to catch up on things. 
There's a dance going on. I said there were a lot of things I want to catch up on. You think Todd will approve? He wants me to be happy. He loves me. Can't wait to meet that kid. We've got a lot in common. Isaac? Oh, Captain, I was gonna come see you. To resign. This job is getting on my nerves. I suppose Vicky told you I yelled at her. You weren't angry at Vicky, Isaac. You were angry at the world. The world? At everything. Mostly at fate, because you think fate singled you out to be handicapped. But you're overreacting, Isaac. The prognosis is good. Isaac! Isaac, there's a very simple test that can prove whether your loss is temporary or not. Now tell me when you stop hearing this, okay? Okay. Can you hear this? Yeah. I'll try the other ear now. Okay. Can you hear this? Yeah. Is that good? It sure is. In no time at all, you should be as good as new, however good that was. Oh, that's fantastic. That's, that's great. Did you hear that? Oh, man. What a relief. Oh. It's too bad it had to happen on this cruise. I lost out on a great chick. But you had an even greater experience, Isaac. You had the opportunity to appreciate something we all take for granted. The gift of hearing. Oh, sir, I was talking to you about a resignation. What resignation? I didn't hear a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Was it true the stock did go down? Alice, <sighs> uh, the other night when you thought I was proposing to you... Glenn, please, you must believe me. I wasn't trying to get back at you. I didn't mean to bring you bad luck. I know that, but I'm glad you did. Now you're not my free meal ticket, yet I still want to be with you. That means that I can press my feelings again. And they tell me it's not Madame Lazanga, but Alice Bailey that I care for. Then you're not going to ask me to make any more predictions? Never. We'll manage our tomorrows with love, not luck. Oh, I like that. I only want you to make one more prediction for me. Could you be happy married to a dull old working man? Let me check it out. I can see our future clearly. And it looks quite wonderful. I think we can get along reasonably well. And I think we can be much happier together than not together. Now, I'm warning you, as that's my last prediction forever. You've got to be extra nice to me. Make up for all the free pinatas I've been missing. <laughs> Well, Louie, I hope you remember me when you become a big star. I'm gonna try not to forget the little people I meet on the way up. Oh, okay. <laughs> you sure have a neat daughter, Mr. McDonald. I know. That's what she keeps telling me. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. How'd everything go with the single parents club? Uh-uh, that's a touchy subject. She got thrown out of the club. Why? 
Oh, ugly rumor. I may soon become a non-single, single parent. <laughs> Isaac, is your hearing better? Hey, don't look at me. Do you think for a moment that I would blab to someone else about your personal life? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I should have realized your problem. But why didn't you tell me? I guess I didn't want you to think I was over the hill. Oh, <laughs> you mean like me? A hearing aid. You're over the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Joyce, we're going to be in port for a couple of days. Could I call you? Sure. It's my office number. Oh, a trial lawyer. Well, I have a case. I would love to discuss with you. Cool. <laughs> it sounds interesting. I, I better get a new battery, though. <laughs> Enjoyed having you with us. Thank. Thank you, baby. Now remember the deal. No more Madame Lasanga, and you don't mention tomorrow to anybody, not even to him. Right. I promise. Well, thanks for sailing with us. Bye-bye. Julie. Yeah. I just had word that the Mexican ambassador will be joining us on our next cruise. The Mexican ambassador? How exciting. Yes, now, no, don't tell a soul. It's very tight security. Okay. It won't be made public until after we sail. Yes, sir. Oh. Goodbye, Julie. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Captain Stewie, we had a wonderful time. <laughs> when everything turned out exactly like you said it would. As Julie swears that you can see into the future. Well, I... Uh... I don't know how that crazy rumor got started. It was all just a coincidence. That's what I told her. Oh, well, please, come sailing with us again. Oh, we will. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Give our regards to the Mexican ambassador. <laughs> <laughs>